Today in Lesson 7, we're going to be investigating the mean even further. In yesterday's lesson, you t looked at um, fair share imbalancing and the sum of the deviations. As we saw in the last lesson, the center of a distribution can be described using the mean. We found the mean using a fair share method and proved our mean was correct by using the sum of the deviations. Today, we will see another way to find the mean of a set of data. Michelle asked her classmates how many hours of sleep they got each night. Their response is, in hours. Find the mean number of hours the classmates slept. Another way you can calculate the mean is to add up all of these numbers. Okay, that's where we're going to start. 8 plus 10 plus 8 plus 8, I'm going to do it here. 11, 11, 9, and 8, I'm going to do here. And 10 and 7. I find breaking it up sometimes can be easier if you're not using a calculator. Okay, 8 times 3 is 24. 24 plus 10 is 34. 11 times 2 is 22. Plus 9 is 31. 31 plus 8 is 39. And 10 plus 7 is 17. Now I can add all three of these sums together. Okay, so 34, 39, 17. I'm going to challenge myself and not use a calculator. 13 plus 7 is 20. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So I got a sum of 90. Okay, let's check it with our calculator. 10 plus 8 plus 8 plus 8 plus 11 plus 11 plus 9 plus 8 plus 10 plus 7. Okay, perfect. My calculations match, okay? Now, to find the average or center of the data, you take the sum of all of your data and divide it by the number of numbers you added together. That was 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 90 divided by 10 is 9. And we should make a statement about what this means. Our 9 is our mean. Okay? And what that really means, on average, Michelle's classmates slept nine hours. So nine is really describing or is considered a center of this data set. Okay? And remember, you add up all of the numbers and you divide by the number of numbers you add in. Let's try another example, something a little different. Find the missing value. 28 plus 36 plus some number gives you a mean of 34 or 35 after it's divided by 3. Every time you get a problem like this, we want, Mrs. Kitchell and I would like you to think about it in this way. Okay? You have to find some sort of total. the total of these three numbers, okay, when divided by the number of data pieces is going to give us our mean, okay? So we have three numbers here, okay? We don't know what their total is of these three numbers, okay? because we don't know what this is. So I'm going to put T for total, okay? When these three numbers total is divided by 1, 2, 3, we get a mean of 35, okay? Now this goes back right back to our days of algebra, which is really cool, okay? Um, I'm actually going to write this a little differently too. T divided by 3 equals 35. Maybe you can make a connection to something we learned earlier. Okay, we're going to draw a line down the equal sign. 
You can do undo division with multiplication. So you're going to times this side by 3. They're going to cancel. Whatever you do to one side, you must do to the other. So the total of those three numbers is going to be 105. Okay? That does not mean that this number is 105. Okay? It means that all three of these numbers must total 105. Okay? So I'm going to add 28 and 36 together and I get a sum of 64. Now, in order to find that missing number, I take what my total should be, which is 105, and I subtract what I already have, which is 64, and my missing number is 41. Now, we can check that, okay? I'm going to take out my calculator. Okay, let's see if the average or the mean of these three numbers is indeed 35. So 28 plus 36 plus 41 is 105. And when we divide that by 3, because there's 1, 2, 3 numbers in our data set, we indeed get a mean of 35. Now I'd like you to try some examples on your own.